Is this like kind of a nice side effect of being locked up? Because we get like um, baby skin. Look, we got to find the silver linings. We got to find the silver linings. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm so excited to have you on here today. I mean, this is our third one. You know, we've known each other for a long time. I know, how funny. Um, I just want to give everyone a quick background again on what we're doing here. I started this to highlight local restaurants who are struggling during this, um, you know, unprecedented pandemic. Um, so each day I'm talking to a different amazing friend of mine and we're highlighting a different restaurant here in Los Angeles, um, maybe to be expanded soon. Such a wonderful idea. I was so excited when you reached out to me because it's something that I've not heard of many people doing or anyone doing and it's something that I think that there are so it's like such a ripple effect of what's happening right now like you said with this unprecedented time like this is going to go down as um such an intense time in our history and the fallout from it is almost it, it's inconceivable it's things that we don't even know about yet and um this is one of many things that we need to turn our attention to to make sure that the people who get our help who need our help actually receive our help because we're gonna lose so many incredible restaurants like restaurants we have so many memories in and this is such an important thing that you're doing. I'm really, really happy that you're doing it. Thank you so much. I think, uh -huh. you know, the other thing I think is really important that I say every day is that again, this journey is different from every, for everyone. Everyone is in a different place. If ordering in takeout or delivery is not something that you can do right now, that's okay. But if it is somewhere um, that, you know, you can help, this is a great way to help people stay employed, to keep the lights on, um, and really help a lot of people who are hurting. Definitely. Um, so wait, let's, let's, uh, you don't know what we've sent you today. Do you have the, no. do you have the bag? Oh yeah, I have the bags. Okay, I so. Two massive bags. Today's restaurant, guys, is Mastro's, um, which if you're from LA, or you um, know anything about LA, this is an institution here. It's iconic. It's a, been around for over 50 years. Um, it's really an incredible place with a lot of rich history rooted in LA culture. Um, so it's one that I personally wanted to support. Do you want to show everyone the bag you have? I, they sent me so much food. So like, I think you probably have the same, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I had, when I, when I went and I grabbed it, it was like an armful. Okay. So I have, they're labeled. This is so cute. So I have just a box of whipped cream for what I don't know. I think that's for you and Tommy later. Okay, great. <laughs> I'll save that. I'll put that to the side. And then I have truffle butter mushrooms, asparagus steamed slash sauteed, one pound baked potato. Um, one pound baked potato. Can we open that? What is yeah, I was that? just about to say, can I open this? By the way, I just want to shout out Patrick, who's the general manager, who's a dear friend of mine. Um, I know he's working tire tirelessly to keep the lights on. Um, and he, he sent me a personal note saying that his daughters, Ava, Stella, Capri, and Mila, are big fans of yours. So just Aww. want to shout them out. Ava, Stella, Capri, and Mia? Mila. Mila. Okay. Ava, Ava, Stella, Capri, and Mila. Sending all my love. Thank you so much for this incredible food. Guys, this is dense. This is very heavy. Okay, wait. Okay. Oh, Mastro's Signature Butter Cake. Sorbet. So, I think what it is in each box is what's highlighted. Yeah. Oh, oh, God, I got it, got it. Okay, so I have a massive box of mushrooms for my one pound, my one pound potato. King salmon twin lobster. <gasps> Ooh, oh, that sounds amazing. Oh, my gosh. Wow, you guys. Which one is this? Let's see. This is the king lobster. Oh, is this the lobster? Hold for on, guys. Sure. I just got to show you. I know. I have to show you my massive lobster. <laughs> Oh my gosh! And look it at this presentation. So wow, truly beautiful. Wait, how do you like how art. do you like your lobster? Should we try that first, or what do you want to try okay. first? Yeah, let's try the lobster first. Do you put the lemon on it? Are you like a lemon person? Oh yeah, definitely a lemon person. I'm not a lemon person. I I I, I like I like salt. Really? Salt yeah. on your lobster? Not well. Depends on depends. But I, I'm more of like a salt or dip in mayo or dip in like. I'm Some kind of sauce. A, a, so I'm not a big lemon person. Really? I really like lemon. I didn't I didn't used to. I don't know what it is about it. I just like the way that it makes seafood taste. It gives it like this kind of freshness. But it's clearly seasoned with like a bunch of incredible. 
I don't know. I don't know. I, like I, yeah, let's, let's try it. I know. I'm like, do I have the right utensils for this? <laughs> wow. I love that we're having the same meal. I didn't know that was a this part of so it. This is so cute. I, you know, it's our, vir our virtual meal. Our little date. This looks so good. Hold on. <laughs> you guys. Mmm. I have to get like a big piece. Wow, I've not had lobster in like over a year. Okay. Same. Oh my God, it's so good, right? Oh my God. Can we just like show that lobster in? It's like actually so amazing. It's insane. Like people have no idea. Like you guys, I mean, I don't know. Do you guys want to see this? <laughs> this is unreal. This it's is like, amazing. This is like the most perfectly cooked and seasoned lobster I think I've ever had. It's so I've good. also never been so bougie to have lobster be delivered to my house. I feel I very bougie. Today's a bougie day. Not every day has been bougie, but today, you know what? I wanted to surprise you because I love you so much. Um, I love you. You're so kind to me. No, I mean, so literally, like, look, I've known you forever. Um, I'm sure a lot of people here have known you forever, but not everyone has. So I, I just want to hear a little bit about, like, how did you begin? What was the start for you for, uh, of this business for you? Where did you come from? Um, first of all, if you just saw an arm swipe up into frame, that was my cat, who's very into this idea of this meal right now. Um, where did I start? I mean, one of my very first films I made was actually where I met you. Funny enough, you get yourself away from the lobster. Um, I met you on the set of Barely Lethal, right? Yes. And you were taking photos. Uh, we were in like somebody's backyard or something and you had this really nifty camera and it was white and i remember being like "Ooh, i want one of those what was that camera do you remember what i'm talking about yeah i think it was a sam's i don't think they make them anymore it was like no but it was like the cool thing at the time this is guys this was like seven or eight years ago <laughs> this and, was like... <laughs> and it was like a samsung camera and you could send it right to your phone yeah yeah or could you print it from it May, uh, maybe. No, maybe. I never had the had... printer, but you might have been able to. It was very fancy. And I remember being like, wow, this guy's really fancy. <laughs> um, and you were taking photos of us and taking photos just all around the set. Um, and that was our meet anniversary. I'm sure if we looked it up, we could have an actual date. Um, but that was one of my, that was one of my first films. Uh, it was one of my first films outside of Disney, but I, I got my start I don't know. I mean, it's kind of like one of those classic, just like slow snowball Hollywood things. Like I came to LA, um, you know, with a dream <laughs> and my mother, um, who was always a big part of making anything happen for their child's career. Um, and I just was hell bent on, on being an actor. And I really loved film and I really loved music. And I found myself doing TV and music and, uh, yeah, I guess the very first thing that I did was I did I did a series of episodic guest roles um, to get my feet wet. And then and then I booked Disney pretty early on. And that's I mean, that's, yeah, I don't know. It was kind of like everything happened at once. But it was definitely um, it was definitely something that I, I felt like it, it, you, you I always said that you have to go in with no backup plan, because if you have mm. a backup plan, you will give up because it is such a tough industry and you get so much um, rejection at different levels. Like it doesn't actually, it's like once you break in, the rejection doesn't stop. It's like, it's quite a tough industry just to even be in. I'm sure that you feel the same. Like even though we're in different professions within this industry, this industry can be quite um, just like a task to be a part of every day. Hmm. Uh, absolutely. I mean, it's so funny. So it was Liv and Maddie your first, your first thing. Technically, I did a movie called Cloud Nine for the Disney Channel um, okay, before that. I don't, but I, yeah. I don't know why in my brain, I always thought you did Broadway first, because I know you've done Broadway. Yeah, I think, I think it's because I started out doing stage. Like, I started out doing stage, but it was all, like, smaller local things. Um, and the idea was either my, – my parents had just split up, and me being a 13-year-old, <laughs> I used that as, like – leverage to be mm. like okay mom you're at a you're at a point in your life where <laughs> you're you're either gonna go one way or the other and I know where I want to go so let me lead you there and I was like either you're gonna move to a big city 
um, cause she just gotten her master's degree in sustainability and she wanted a new job and it was like, she was going to start over in her life. And so I was trying to convince her to start her life over in LA or New York. And, um, basically we decided on LA, if I was to go to New York, I would, I would have done stage. Maybe that's what you're thinking. Cause I was, I was thinking I might've gone straight for stage. Um, but then we, we chose LA literally because she was like, I hate the weather in New York and, and LA seemed like some place that she might be able to like find a job more easily and so we cho chose it um, you know based on practicality and then my whole career has been based in LA and film and TV and not stage stage mm. more recently but yeah but, I was yeah. gonna know because you you've done stage recently and and to like incredible reviews first of all thank you uh, I really wanted to see the one that you had done in London and we missed each other and that was yeah I, everyone you got a lot of praise for that so Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's it's I I guess I sort of got a little like um, gun shy about stage. I sort of feel like there, there, there's such different mediums, film and TV and stage. And if you've been doing one for a while, I just sort of feel like the other one loses steam. It loses its credibility. And so I was like, oh, God, do I even know how to do this anymore? Um, so I, I kind of took like a year and I did Clueless and then I did Light in the Piazza twice. Um, and I really, I really feel good now. I feel like I've like really worked on, on that uh, in terms of like how I feel about it. I can now confidently be like, I'm a stage performer. I trust myself in that medium. Um, whereas before, you know, I would have felt kind of like a fraud if I had said that I was a stage performer. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely, it's, it's so nice to be able to feel free to do so much. I'm sure you feel the same. Yeah, I mean, I was just thinking like, what you just said about this this like sort of pressure to like make the right moves and to be strategic about like do you do this project next or this project next and i feel a lot of that all the time in what i do as a photographer and i know as an actor you you must like it's crazy the amount of sort of pressure and there's so many voices in the room about like if you don't do this next you're never going to get here or you you have to be more like this or more like that and it's really hard to like sometimes navigate that yeah and I also think something that I'm really facing right now is like there's this sort of invisible thing because there obviously there used to be what like 50 well-known celebrities in old Hollywood you know we could all name them most of them most of the big ones and now because of the amount of different avenues you can go down different um sort of like I guess like a I don't know, maybe types of celebrity you can be, like the ways that you can gain a sort of a following or, or a credibility. It's so vast, you know, I feel like there, there are more, uh, there are more famous people, more, more working actors, singers, performers, artists than there ever have been. And there's a sort of an invisible, like they all go into a sort of a category, you know, whether or not that's intentional or not, like in the eyes of a audience or in the eyes of the public. And it's really, really hard right now because it's, it's very, it's such a slippery slope. It's like, if you do too much of this, you slip that way and then you can't do that stuff. And if you do too much over here, you slip that way and maybe you make more money or maybe you have more fun, but then you can't do that stuff. And it's like, it's very much, um, it's very slippery right now where it may feel like there are more opportunities for performers than ever. I think that it's also very, um, it's a sort of a, a tricky place to navigate with all of this like social media and the way that media is changing rapidly. It's definitely something that we all have to be a little heads up about um, as performers. And, and even, you know, like, I mean, everybody in the industry has to be very like heads up on their career right now. Um, but it's also fun. A lot of it's in our control more so than ever. So that's sort of a double edged thing, I guess. Hmm. Should we try something else? What do we want to try next? Oh, there's so let's... much. I know. I'm like, what, what, let's see. Let's try. Let's, what's this? That looks cold. We'll wait for that. I think that's desserty. I think I have French fries here. <laughs> do I just have a whole box dedicated to only French fries? <gasps> yes. <laughs> oh my God. You guys. And also Justin. What? what do you this? have this? <gasps> yes. This is my favorite thing ever. <gasps> what? in the world i have never like, seen this literally. many fries okay wait i have to put this lobster aside not because i want to but because my um, my focus has been <laughs> stolen <laughs> okay will you try fries with me 
Yes. Oh my, are you kidding me? Fries are my favorite thing. Fries are my favorite thing. <gasps> Gorge. Do you hear my cat? Oh my god. Oh my god. It's so good. What is this baked in? It's literally amazing. I mean, like, I'm a fry addict. What is this baked in? These taste really different than other fries. They're so good. Oh my god, Mastro's. Is that how you say it? Mastro's? Yeah, Mastro's. Love Mastro's. Big, big fan. <gasps> it's so good. Is this baked in truffle butter? <laughs> it might I can't go over it. Probably. It might. It might it might um, actually be quality. It's just solid truffle butter. What um, have you been doing at home to keep yourself feeling inspired? Because I feel like you are such a people person and you're such a person that like thrives on the energy of set and of people and creatives and, and beauty. What are you doing? Honestly, I have, I've just been trying to stay as creative as possible. I've been working on a lot of like projects that are virtual. Um, I've been collaborating with a lot of people around the world to do stuff in that space, but that's that's different and transformative and pushing what that looks like, acknowledging that it's virtual, not trying to be something else. Yeah. Um, so I've been doing a lot of that. I've been working on this platform on Tings. So we have a lot of exciting stuff planned coming up. Um, you, Love you've Tings. been an early, early supporter. Um, if you've already been in one issue, we need to have you back, obviously. Which, by the way, As was one of my favorite shoots ever. I look back on that shoot and I'm like, wow. Like, we just woke up that day and we said, I don't know. Like, it was so beautiful. You're so talented. Thank you. <laughs> no, it's all you. Stop. It's all you. Thank oh. you. Um, you know, I was also thinking back to, because you mentioned Barely Lethal. Um, that's where we first met, which is crazy. And, like what a group that cast was and like what that group has become. I mean, from yourself and Sophie Turner and um, Haley Steinfeld and Jessica Alba, Samuel Jackson. I mean, obviously Samuel and Jessica were already big superstars, right. but the three of you have become such superstars in, in the past, well, I don't know, was it six years, seven years? I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's been, it's insane. Like, do you still, do you still ever see anyone from that or? You know, I actually haven't seen Sophie Turner since like the day we wrapped. Um, wow. Which is really funny. I know, how funny. Um, she's so, I love her so much. She's so funny. I mean, obviously, like I, like I said, I haven't seen her since then. But like, I just think as a person, she's so lovely, so, so normal, so down to earth, so like strange and like through and through, like just a really, really good person overall. She she's, she's, I love her. I love her. Um, and then I have seen Haley a couple times because, you know, there, she's done some things like she said some cross, like we've been at the same events. We've been like, you know, um, introducing some people or something like that. Um, but it's always been pretty brief, but I've texted her a few times. I mean, she's killing it, right? She's amazing. I, I, uh, I'm trying to feel, I'm trying to think if I've seen anybody else from that. I mean, you, you've probably seen Jamie and Kyle, right? Yeah. I've seen Kyle. I've seen Kyle. Uh, it's so funny that that was like such a, it was such a weird, like at the time we had no idea how different, ev yeah. And everybody's yes. career is so different, like so singular and like their, their performance styles and who they've become is so different than who they were then as well. Mm -mm -mm. It's wild to think about. And it's also such a, a funny little movie that like some people know about. I still get tweets about it. And then some people have no idea. And then when you look back, you're like all of these people in the same movie, what a weird thing. I know it's so it's so, it was really special and us being I feel like we're all such good friends from that because we were all in Atlanta we're not even in Atlanta we were a lot of it was two hours in the suburbs outside of Atlanta was that where we were because I've been to Atlanta since and like my memory I'm like I don't remember any of this we were like two hours outside of Atlanta for the for most of it um yeah. staying at like what a motel basically we we're all like yeah. at that motel um I remember it was like fenced up and they were like People Chicken selling tasers everywhere. on the outside. Yes. And there was like a, a, a Waffle House across the street. And that yes. was it. You either yes. had to eat at the Waffle House, the Red Lobster, or the IHOP. Those are the only three the options. The only options. Yeah, which at the time was great. It was. I was like, <laughs> at the time it was like. Lobster House felt like a luxury then. Yeah. <laughs> or lo yeah. Whatever it's called, lobster something. And yeah. that was the last time we ate lobster until today. It might have been the last time I've had lobster. <laughs> Um, also, then also, did you come with us when we went to like Maine 
Atlanta? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah, because, yes, yes, yes. I was there for a week, yeah. Because that was when we, like, got, what is it, Lenox Square Mall, and it was, like, very exciting that there was this massive <laughs> mall. I remember I went back recently because Thomas was there. No. Yeah, Thomas was there shooting something. Um, and I was like, oh, my God, memories. I feel like if you're an actor or you work on films, you, like, know Atlanta and Vancouver and, like, New Mexico really well. Sometimes and those, Shreveport. <laughs> I've never been there. Where's that? A lot of stuff films. I think that's Louisiana and a lot of, a lot of stuff. Um, a lot of the Marvel stuff films there. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I'd say Vancouver and Atlanta are probably oh, the two. Love Vancouver. Um, I know. Me too. Um, <laughs> that's where Cammy films. That's why I was talking to her on Monday. And so it's is funny. she still there? No, she is back in LA. Thankfully, she got oh, back. Yes. I think she was able to get back like two weeks ago or three weeks ago. I think that would be so stressful to be working and then. I mean, even though yeah. I'm sure they all they all have apartments there, like that would be so stressful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're so isolated. When, when you're working, it's not so bad because you're working like 16 hour days. But yeah. then, like, if you're isolated there and you're not working, it's like you're really alone. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And not and not at home either. Should well, we try? Over. Should we try something else? What else? Yes. What else is there? <laughs> oh my gosh. I have a whole king salmon. Ooh, I have that. Too. <laughs> you get me two dinners. <laughs> I I told them just to surprise us. So oh I think my... this is <gasps> You guys, I am. Are you a big salmon person? I am. I I do. Are you? person yeah. yeah it's so good for your skin so i was just about to say that. i was like i was like should i say that it's like a big secret for your skin just like all the all the all the fatty oils in salmon the natural fat production is like so so good for your skin now and this you lemon, do the, le the lemon on this too i love the lemon. This one with the lemon i think it's really nice i really i don't know why i just my taste buds changed i used to be like i used to be like you i used to not be a lemon person you know what, though? I like do you say you like it. mayo? I do like mayo. I used to not be a mayo person, and now on lockdown, I've been making so many sandwiches for Thomas for lunch, because he makes dinner and I do lunch. You're so <laughs> domestic. You're making no, really like Like a 1950s house with making the sandwich. I wake him up and I say, what do you want, baby? <laughs> I do. I make breakfast and lunch, um, which at first I was like, that's an easy trade-off. And now I'm so lazy. I'm like, Ugh. Like, And who I'm does like, the dishes? <laughs> Well, that's that's the main point of contention. I'm looking at him outside right now. That's the main point of contention. Basically, the the thinking is that because I do breakfast and lunch, he does those dishes, and then he does dinner, and so I do those dishes. But the dinner dishes are always like a fucking like. Sorry, yeah, that's, not, <laughs> that's not a fair trade. No, it's not. It's not a fair trade because the dinner dishes are like there. I mean, it's like the whole. It looks like there's been a bomb that's gone off in the kitchen, and then breakfast and lunch is like a bowl. A plate <laughs> with a few crumbs on it. It's not fair at all. Yeah, you're definitely getting the short end of this. I know. But to be fair, he, he like, makes meals a lot longer than I do. I'm kind of like, sure. do you want a sandwich? <laughs> I'm really lazy about it. But I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to get better. I'm, like, watching YouTube videos about, like, healthy, easy meals. I might get an air fryer. Fuck it. I got an air fryer. Mm, do you love it? That's the only way I can cook anything. I You press a button and it's done. Oh, my God. Wait. I just took my first bite of that salmon. That's amazing. It is really good, right? Like tender. Mm -hmm. Wow. I like the lemon on this one. Um, wait, what's your go-to thing in the air fryer? What do you what 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 do you make in the air fryer? I've not made anything. I don't ha I don't have it yet. Oh, you don't have it yet. Okay, you need to get it. But my plan, I watched um, somebody's YouTube video where they make a um, like coconut chicken strip. So they take like these pre-made, not pre-made. They're like pre-sliced chicken strips but they're yeah, like yeah. natural organic chicken and then they dip it in an egg mm -hmm. and then they dip that in coconut shavings and then yeah. like some spice and then they just pop it in the air fryer for 10 minutes and it's ready and i was like so what i do the same thing but with almond flour instead and it's amazing um because it's like breading yeah and it's just oh almonds. My God. and that's so great because i'm so lazy in the kitchen but i don't want unhealthy food because I've just gotten to this point where I feel awful. Like I like when, when I'm having more blueberry Nutella, like bagels than I am <laughs> like not throughout the day, like replacing meals with that. That's I'm starting to feel like a crazy person. What is your like go to? Like, I don't care about the calories. I don't care about the carbs. Like what is your go to cheat food? Like if you're just going to like go for it. Okay. 
I actually have an answer for this. Have you ever been? You're going to be like, no, because it is so, so divey. But there's this donut place in Burbank on Magnolia. Do you know about this? It's a 24-hour donut hut. No. Where they make it. It's like its own thing. It doesn't have a chain. It doesn't have... I think it's the only one. And it's just like these guys. I don't even know who owns it. It's just the same couple of guys all the time, 24 hours. And they're making fresh donuts constantly. So cheap. Like 69 cents per donut. And you show, you show up and you get like a dozen of them. And they are the nicest donuts you've ever had. I can't even explain it. Like there's something about, like, I don't know what they do. But they're What's like freshness. What's your favorite kind of donut? Honestly, they're so good that their donuts, like glazed, plain oh, glazed. Like they, same. I just like plain glazed. Yeah, my, my favorite donut is this place. Have you heard of Donut Friend? No. It it's downtown. I get it. I post made it. Uh, so bad. <laughs> but it's literally you don't like, want to go to downtown. <laughs> it's it's vegan, first of all. But it's like like there's you cannot tell the difference between that and Krispy Kreme. And if you can, the difference is that theirs is even better. Like it doesn't taste like one of those vegan like cakey weird donuts. It's, not like, it's heavy. like no, it's like fully fried in sugar like. Like, it's amazing, but no dairy. It's incredible. And they do all You're these weird things, mind. too. Like, they have all weird flavors, too. And then they have just the classic. They're amazing. You're I'm blowing gonna, my I'm mind. Gonna send, I'm going to send you a box. Let's support them. <laughs> yeah, they're they're amazing, too. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, shout out shout out to all of our favorite donut places. Everybody, please continue to order <laughs> donuts. No, but we have. Um, we have a couple times. Wait, let, let's look at some of these fan questions, because they're, like, okay. piling up. And I feel like we should give someone. Most of them are fan compliments to you. Aww. <laughs> Um, okay, let's see. This is a good question. What was your first reaction when you got the your part in Descendants? Actually, that's so crazy because I was on the set of Barely Lethal when I got the part in Descendants. Um, so that's really weird. Um, I was uh, 17 and I was in the crafty we, we, were, we were having lunch which at the time it was like 9 p.m like really late lunch because if you start filming really late um or you have to do a night shoot oftentimes we'll have lunch anytime like any any time six hours after we start six to eight hours uh and so we were having it at like 9 or 10 p.m and it was pouring rain and i was in this tent and i got a phone call from an unknown number which almost always at the time meant it was disney channel I wasn't cool enough to have anybody's phone number at the time. Oh, um, they were like super covert about it. They were like, you don't get to know who's calling um, or how to contact us. And they called me and they, yeah, offered me the part. And I remember it being like, at the time I had already met with Kenny Ortega, um, which kind of let me know the magnitude of the project that they were planning and sort of what they wanted to do with it and how serious they were about it. And so I was really excited that they trusted me with, that um again it was kind of like another kind of a crazy project like live and maddie you know asking me to play twins so i was feeling very like good about that i was like cool i love that there's this massive corporation and they're trusting me with these two big projects that they are really excited about even though i didn't know what it was going to be so yeah mm -hmm. wait you said something you said you weren't cool enough to have anyone else's phone number so this sparked a question that i personally want to know because you were cool enough then, and you're definitely cool enough now. <laughs> Who, who's the coolest person you have in your phone book? Is there anyone that you're like, well, I can't, as a kid, you'd be like, I can't believe I have that number. Whose number is the coolest you have? There's actually a couple that, like, would really geek me out. Um, I, I, I just recently became, um, um, like, weirdly friends with Amy Adams. Okay, I love and love. I That's love amazing. Amy Adams and yeah. I was freaking out because she she asked me to do a couple of um, basically we've been working together on a couple like charity initiatives but she wanted to talk to me one day and I was like panicking I was like oh my god and I was coconut oil in my hair and I was like Amy Adams don't look at me and she she FaceTimed me and we ended up talking for like 40 minutes about just like life and she's the nicest person alive um, and I, I guess I didn't know what to expect because she's such a you know, it's like, it's, it's not like, um, her personality is really like, I mean, she's, she's a person, right? It's not like blasted all over the internet and she's the nicest person ever. Um, and then I also, I also would really geek out obviously about Kristen Chenoweth, but also, um, Adam Sandler. I, I love Adam That's Sandler. Yes. Yeah, so Adam really once drove me on a golf cart around the lot where Happy Madison is. And I'll never forget that. That was, I was geeking out. That was cool. 
Iconic, truly yeah, iconic. Yeah, he, he's iconic. He is. And he's, such a good I mean, guy. Those are, I mean, these are, those are some cool, okay, you were definitely winning. I was, I, yeah, I definitely, I was, yeah, that was a very pinch me moment. Um, wait, here's a question. What is your favorite Starbucks drink? I'm so boring. I just get, I just get, um, well, so what I normally get is a venti iced cold brew with light ice. Because if I get loads of ice, I'm kind of like, mm, you're dipping me on my coffee. So I ask for like very little ice so that I get more caffeine. <laughs> it's really bad for you. I shouldn't have as much caffeine as I do. But if I'm going to like get fancy... I have a venti skinny vanilla latte with an ad shot and soy milk. And soy milk, I don't think is great for you in big amounts, but every once in a while I'll have some. And only skinny just means that the vanilla syrup is sugar-free. So I feel like I'm like kind of cheating, kind of not, but yeah. Wait, here's a question that I actually don't know the answer to. Are you naturally blonde? I don't know this. I am. I am. It's um. It's like a, a sort of an Amanda Seyfried blonde. Do you know okay, what I mean? That's blonde. That's very blonde. Yeah, it's like a honey blonde. It's just that when I have like, you can kind of see it. Like I have these highlights that make this look really dark. But I'm gonna try to grow out my natural color so that you guys can see how blonde it really is. Because I I always color in my eyebrows because they're too light. Um, but yeah, you, I don't think I've actually had my natural hair color in years i mean since i was like maybe nine so it'll be a fun quarantine experiment um i mean well amanda seyfried's hair color is stunning so it's going to be stunning and you're stunning so. <laughs> i'd say that the experience it's not much of an experiment we know you're going to look amazing oh thank you um wait here's a good one what what is your quarantine netflix recommendation have you been binge watching anything yeah i although i'm i i feel really bad to say i don't know if this is on netflix or not we just started watching um dead to me that, I, I think, think that's Netflix. Netflix. Christina yeah, that's Applegate. Netflix. Mm -hmm. We just started watching that. We're really into that. We've already finished. I don't know if this is Netflix, but we've already finished all of Ozark. We watched The Office, um, the whole series for like the sixth time already. Uh, what else have we watched? It's been a lot. We've done a lot of binging. Um, we're right now enjoying RuPaul, the current season. I haven't seen it, but I need. To, everyone says I would love that. It's what? Wait, you haven't seen it at all? Never. I've never seen one episode. I can't overstate it enough. When people told me that I was going to love it, I was like, okay. But it is, like, I can't, I can't overstate it. It's so good. You have to watch it. Start, start with, like, season seven or something. Okay. Um, and work your way up, and you'll be so happy you did it. You need to watch Normal People. Have you seen Normal People? No. That's, okay, my, that's my one new thing I need to watch. No, no. Like, you, it's, like, changed my life. It's the best thing. Really? It's the best thing I've seen in at least a year. That's so exciting. It's on Hulu. It's incredible. I think it was made for the BBC and Hulu bought it. It's two sort of new undiscovered actors. It is the best thing I've ever seen. There's only 12 episodes, so like 30 minutes each. So it's very, very achievable to do it in like one or two days. Um, amazing. Like, okay. set in Ireland. It's a love story in Ireland, modern day Ireland. You're going to love it. Because it's, gonna, it's very going to be like, you're going to feel very like you can relate. <laughs> we love to see it. Yeah, um, I, I absolutely. Yeah, I love shit like that. I need, I need a new, I need a new like actual TV show to binge because I'm, I'm getting burnt out on my like terrible reality TV. It's making me feel sad. <laughs> what's your, like, go what's your go-to? Honestly, I actually don't watch any, and that's the honest truth. So I need a good recommendation. Okay, if you don't watch any, oh, there are so many good ones. Um, Ninety Day Fiance is great. It's uh, it's about people who are on 90 day visas um, and like with, with the show, the show films them like with the intent to get married and, and the couples are, you just have to watch it for yourself. It's, it's a very um, entertaining, like in-depth look at a sort of a, a funny even process. Um, but I don't know, like if you don't watch any reality TV, I feel like things like Love Island aren't going to be great. I don't know. It's really hard. Oh, you know, you should watch. This is actually a great recommendation. I was, I was so into this. Um, 100 people, 100 humans. Did you watch that? No. What's that? Okay. It's not quite um, a reality show. It's like a social experiment show where they have three comedians um, who like they, they perform social experiments on a group of a hundred people diverse in um, age and gender and everything. And they, they go all across the board with like all these um, 
sort of like groups of people. And then they do these social experiments on them, never really telling them, they sign up for this. <laughs> it's not like evil, but um, never telling them what the intent of the social experiment is so that the humans can't hack it. And it just basically shows like a really in-depth look th at the human psyche and like biases and what age group is better at what. And it's, it's utterly fascinating and like uplifting because it's quite positively done. And I'm like begging for a second season. Oh my God. Um, I'm going to watch that. And the other one you said, Nicola, my, you know Nicola. She, she's been telling me to watch that one too. 90 Day, 90 day Fiance. Or, yeah, okay, she been just watched the whole thing with Brooklyn. So I need to watch that. It's amazing. I feel like that's the one it. I'm going to start with because you've said it, she's said it. I feel like I'm, if I'm going to like dip my toe in, I, I'll dip it there. I just tend to like like scripted drama. I like anything that's like sad and like <laughs> torture. Sad and depressing and just... That's so funny. Yeah, no, I need to watch more of that because I've gone and I'm like, I'm burnt out on reality TV. I'm feeling like I need some substance, but now you can take over. I'll send you all of my best recommendations. Should we dig into this dessert? Like, should we try this dessert that they sent? I mean, it looks amazing. Yes. Hold on. I need to like clear room for it because they sent some butter cake. Okay, this is, I feel very spoiled and food is one of my main love languages. So I don't even think that's on the chart, but for me it is. <gasps> This is a full Wait, blown. What? I'm opening the butter cake. Hurry, hurry up. What the Wow. That's epic. I have never even heard of a butter cake. But this is now, wow. It smells like honey and it just looks like solidified sugar. It's really good. Wait. People love when we drip things on things. So let's show them. Let's, okay. let's show them the drip. Hold on. Okay. People love when we drip things on things. Oh, this is hard to do. Yeah, yeah it doesn't. Oh, there we go. I got it. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Whoa. What is this? I don't know, but it smells Ooh. like what I imagine heaven to smell like. Yeah, this is like, oh my God, and it's so thick. I don't even know if we could consider that a syrup. It's like a. It's like. <laughs> It's, it's like, like its, its own. own thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's its own. It's it's its own dessert. Okay, oh wait. I'm going straight for the center. <gasps> I don't even know what I'm. I have no expectation for how this is gonna taste because I don't. I can't tell. Mm. What? It's really good. That. That's really really good. Oh my God. God, what is that? This is amazing, and I'm like I'm more of a salty person than a sweet person, but this I could yeah. That's but amazing. it's got salt in it. It's like salted on the top. Yeah, it's so good. Whoa. It's like a cheesecake. It's like a cakey bread. Yeah, it has that like the savoriness of like, like of like a salted a cheese with bread and almost oh, amazing. But maybe, oh my gosh, maybe that's the butter. Maybe there's like a solid stick of butter in here for sure. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. here's, here's a really good question. Um, no, that's not a really good. Someone said you play basketball. <laughs> that's a random question. <laughs> Get to the real details. <laughs> Does she play basketball? <laughs> the people want to know. I don't. Um, what are your, you have tattoos. Someone's saying, what are your tattoos? I didn't even know you have tattoos. Do you? What? Yeah, I have 11. You have 11 tattoos. Which, yeah. one's your favorite? Which one's your favorite? That's really hard. I really, that's really hard. I don't know. They're all they're all things that I got because they really like mints a lot. So I don't know if I have a favorite. I mean, I got this one for Cameron. Everybody knows that um, it is a homage to his wielding peace campaign um, in which Cameron was attempting to show people holding things in the way that you would hold a firearm, but uh, with peaceful things in their place as well to encourage healthier outlets than gun violence um, for youths and just for everyone everywhere as well. Just sort of like a promotion of peace. Uh, that was his, that was the main thing he was working on before he passed. And so I really wanted to get something that not only to me signified Cameron, but that Cameron would feel good about, you know, like, mm. sort of like a sort of a, honestly, I, I didn't, I mean, you know, I, I put thought into it, but I, I knew that I wanted it to be something that he felt like, was a continuation of his work, something that he was doing now, something that wasn't just for me, but was also for him. So I, that's probably, that's definitely one of my favorites. I also got this, this one right here that says candy is dandy. And oh. it's, it's, so, it's um, my dad always used to have me say this thing. 
I don't remember who the quote is by, and everybody's going to be mad at me for that, but I, uh, I only know it is something my dad used to say, where he would go, um, candy is dandy, but liquor is quicker. And so he'd have me go to, like, That's different cute. adults that would be really scandalized by that when I was, like, three years old. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I just knew that I wanted – I never got – I never had a tattoo for my dad, and he passed so long ago. And I knew that I wanted to – um so yeah yeah so that, those are those are probably my two favorites um this is a really i think a really good question and a question that a lot of people can relate to um people who are in quarantine with other people whether it's siblings significant others how do you maintain a sense of like calm and not being overwhelmed because it can be a lot to be so on top of someone else for so many hours of the day it's not we're not used to that at all. Like we're used to being able to like go out and do our thing and then come home and see our partner or our, or our family. And you're kind of, we're all stuck right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's something that oh, it's something that none of us really have any experience navigating. Like I don't, I don't know anybody who I could call and be like, how did you do that? Right. It's something that we're all attempting to learn how to do. Um, and there is a sort of a sense of a new normal, I feel like with that. But I think as long as you are patient with yourself, um, and patient with whoever you're living with, you know, there's going to be discord. There just is like that. Like you said, humans aren't meant to be doing this. And even if we were, we're not, we're not used to doing this now. So I would say that as long as there's patience and grace on both sides, um, and as long as we are all constantly reminding each other, what a strange situation this is, like half the time my best friend will just be like, this is weird, this is a weird situation, don't think too much about it. Like, stop judging yourself, this is bizarre, you don't need to have it all figured out. And just even that reminder of being like, oh yeah, this is really weird, of course I'm not processing things fully or correctly or healthiest, then it can kind of help you put things into perspective and take a step back. And then just like taking time purposefully for yourself, even if you don't want to. I catch myself being like, oh, I really wanna be around Thomas right now, or oh, I really wanna be like dotting around the apartment and I'll be like, okay, but I know it's important to even just put your headphones in, even just like s step into another room or, you know, if you can, like for us, we don't have any rooms because we live in a studio, but we'll like step on the balcony or like go upstairs or something like that. So yeah, I think just setting that time aside and being patient. And then you do, you remind me of something that I wasn't even thinking, because of course, um, Thomas is from, from Scotland, right? And you spend a lot of time there. You, you guys have been as long as, you know, for the last couple of years, kind of back and forth, back and forth. How's that been for him and for, even for you? Because like, that's an extended family at this point. Mm. They're so separated and you're so stuck here. At least yeah. you have your, your mom here, right? So that's nice. Yeah. Um, in all honesty, my mom ha like, has used to have an autoimmune thing with her lungs. And so we don't see her very much. Um, as in like, we try not to see her very much. Um, so I think, I think that, I think that it was a bit of, I mean, it was a bit of like a tough decision. Like when we first quarantined, we had just, he had just driven all the way to New Mexico to come like get me. So I didn't have to get on a plane and he drove me all the That's way back so to romantic, LA. romantic by the way. So sweet. I know. Such a sweetheart. And we took like a little extra couple days to road trip back um, through Arizona, which was, oh my God, it was amazing. Um, and through uh, Vegas and we took like some detours, but we got back home and it was like, what do you do? Like, you know, he, his, his family is obviously far away. And what about the travel ban? And what about, you know, on the way, are you going to pick anything up? Are you going to come and get your family sick? And then what if he can't get back into the States? You know, it's, it was something that we had to think about. And I think we just made the decision that it probably was safer to like both be here um just for like literally like spreading reasons like just maybe don't travel maybe don't get on three connecting flights uh especially if you you don't know if you're picking it up along the way you know especially if you're not you're not someone who is symptomatic uh but that, it wasn't really something that was like super super thought out it was something we had to think about really quickly so so yeah it's it's hard for him i think it's it's hard for anyone who's stuck and not really able to see their family um and I think, I think he's just, I mean, I don't want to speak for him, but I think he's just managing. He's really in a lot of contact with them. Um, we do like 
quizzes every week. This is quite this is quite a British thing. Do you ever do this? Like a family quiz you know, or like a pub quiz? Fun, not with my American family, but I did this with a lot of my British friends. We, How they, fun. They, they were like, do you want to do this quiz with us? And we did this online virtual quiz. It was so, it was so fun. I beat them, by the way. <laughs> Oh my God, how fun is it? It's like it's something that so we don't fun. have here that then so when you the, start doing it, you're like, why don't we do this? It's so fun. But what was weird was, I can't remember the name of it, but it was actually an American app that they all play and I had never heard of. Really? And it was a quiz app? It was a quiz app. It's an American app. Because a lot of the questions were like, like about stuff that we would know and they would not know, like presidents and stuff. Mm. Um, but they all play it there and their whole group of friends plays it. And I had never heard of it. So it must be way more popular there. Yeah, it's it's quite a normal thing. I actually, people like people in the UK think it's just like everywhere. I had to be like, no, Americans don't do this. But uh, but yeah, we've been, we've been doing like quizzes every week. So somebody will come up with the answers this week. It's our turn. And it's, it's, it's like a fun way to feel connected. Um, but yeah, he's, I mean, he's been here for a while anyway. So he knows how to keep in contact with his family there, but yeah. Um, so just a, la a last few final fun rapid fire questions okay. that I know people are dying. I've, I've seen a lot of, the, of repeat questions. So one, what is your favorite movie? Oh, uh, Pan's Labyrinth or The Elephant Man. Oh, or Down With Love with Ewan McGregor and um, Renee Zellweger. Mm. Classic. Look it up. Yeah. Um, favorite song of the moment. What are you listening to on repeat right now? Oh... That's really hard. Uh, I feel like working for the weekend. Who's that by? Everybody's working for the weekend. I just I've been downloading. I can just hear you like, sing all day. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. Stop. Got chills. No, but I, I downloaded a bunch of old songs, so it's not it's nothing nothing current. And this is one I saw a lot of. What is your favorite song to sing? That's really hard. I don't know. Ah. Musical theater is hard to sing, so I like to do that. But also, I've been really enjoying like. I love singing Ariana Grande stuff because it's like quite fun. Like her What's music's quite- Which one's your favorite? I don't know. Maybe like, the night. like oh. <laughs> or, or like, <laughs> or I can't think of anything. I don't know. I mean, I love all of her songs. It's, it's like anything else. Like if something seems like hard to sing, it's like more fun to sing for a singer. So I just picked up. I ones. love No Tears Left to Cry. Mm, class. I love that. And uh, God is a Woman. Oh, yeah, good I one. I love that one. I just feel like it's so... Bang Bang by Nicki oh. Minaj and Ari and oh my... Jesse J. What a good song. That one's a classic. That one will live on. That's a banger. That's, That's a banger. What are your, that oh, might be my favorite. This, sorry, I know this is going on and on and on, but this just... No. I want to know this. What are some of your favorite, like, British, Scottish terms, slangs you've picked up? Because I have so many. Oh, I good one. I spent a lot of time there, too. Good one. Uh... Well, when I first heard Thomas say we, I was like, what? Because in America, obviously, that means like pee. And so I was yeah. like, why do you say that every three seconds? But now I say it all the time and I, I can't hear it. Like, just a wee bit of coffee, a wee bit of that. Go over there pop for a wee, wee shop or something like that. I think that's pretty, like, in there. Um, class. When you say, like, class, it means, like, something's great. It's like, oh, yeah, that's class. Yeah, that's class. Um, it's hard because if you just say them all the time, you can't, like, think of them. Why? What do you say? I love, well, obviously, Ting, that, I picked that up there. I mean, it's originally Jamaican, but it's really British. You know, it's become British street slang. And street I slang. use that ever, like, he's a Ting, she's a Ting, you know. Um, so obviously, oh, yeah. Ting. Tidy, if someone's good, like, oh, yeah, she's tidy. You look tidy. Or Peng. Peng. Peng um, is quite a London thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think some other ones. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Thomas like, just very quietly in the background went, Peng. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Thomas. Can you hear us? Hi. Hi. Love him. <laughs> um, Toti. I love calling Toti. Like, I, oh, what Do you one? know Toti? No, what's that one? Toti means like little. Like, oh, she's a Toti wee thing. She's Toti. I think Toti. it's a Scottish one. I've never heard my, that. That might be Scottish. That sounds Scottish. That sounds very Scottish. <laughs> You're like, that's not real. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I call, I address people like babe. Hey, babe. babe. Like, they use babe a lot. Babes. Um, which was so weird for me before I had British friends. And now I call everyone babe when I call like. When I first met Thomas and he first came to the set in Vancouver, he was calling everybody babes. And all the girls were like, what? And you're probably like, excuse me? <laughs> yeah, we were like, we don't know you. But and we didn't realize it was like so, so normal. It's so funny now thinking so, back. Yeah, same thing. When people used to be like, hey, babe, I'm like, I don't know you like that. I don't know you like that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Are you flirting with me or what's happening? Am I liking it? <laughs>
Anyway, Dove, thank you so much for being thank a part you. of this. Yeah, Guys, thank you, you so much. you're going to be able to watch this for 24 hours. Dove's going to put it on her live story thing. I'm going to put it on our live story thing. Um, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for supporting, you know, local restaurants. I can't wait till we can, like, have a meal together at one. Yes, I, I know. Um, thank you so much, Dove. I love you. Thank you so much for having me. Mwah. You're I'll true. see you soon in person, hopefully. Love you. Love you. I think you have to end, or do I have to end it? Oh, yeah.